I was gonna also gonna ask you, um, geez, what was my other question? Sometimes I, I lose my train of thought when in these interviews. Oh, oh. I, I didn't mean to be nationalistic by going, you know, it's just that the artists in America know. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, for sure. No, you know, they know that you're working, you know, like Marvel and DC, it's like boom, 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 the next issue, next issue. It's, it's also a different kind of discipline. Like when I was doing Ren and Stimpy, I was working with Mike Kazala, love Mike Kazala, mm -hmm. and he's an animator. Mm -hmm. And he used different muscles, and he's used to drawing like a zillion frames a day for animation. Right. So he would draw like a page of a comic, a couple pages of a comic book in a day, and go, "What people complain about this?" Yeah, but it's always different from each person, depending on what your muscles are. And if you're someone who gets to work on like a European folio, and you do it at your own pace, and it's done when it's done, and then you're happy that's great and that's art and you'll win an Eisner and everyone will love you. But, you know, we're making Big Macs today. <laughs> you know, there's like a billion people served and, oh God, it's, it's the weird, it's the weird uh, give and take of comics where you, Amy, want your comic on that shelf when it's listed in previews. Mm -hmm. You want to show up on Wednesday, and you want to you want to know that Super Guy is there on the stand, issue number fifteen, because that's what it said in previews. Mm -hmm. And if Super Guy fifteen is a week late, you're like, oh, it's a week late. And if Super Guy fifteen is a month late, you are really mad. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's gotta be there. And and if you're working on like a mini series. You know, and the artist is with every issue getting a little slower and a little slower, and the writer's getting a little slower and a little slower, and the colorist is getting a little slower because it's tired, <laughs> and everybody is slowing down. Then you get to that point of, well, can't they just put a fill-in guy in? I want my I want my mini series <laughs> issue number five, right? You know, but then the person who picks it up in a trade goes, issues one, two, three, and four look great. And five, a fill-in guy, six, and they get upset. You know, is so it? someone's going to get upset. You're yeah, either yeah. going to get your issue five a month late or you're going to get a filling guy and then the person reading it in trade is going to be upset. Someone's yeah. on, but it's American comics and they're coming out. Yeah. God, I'm babbling. Can you tell I haven't slept? Oh, no, you no. Know, you, could ask, you could ask me anything right now. <laughs> and I, I would just tell you. What's the end of uh, Clone Conspiracy? Oh, it's this. <laughs> what is the end? Come on. No. <laughs> Now that you're making up the questions, come on. <laughs> um, I did want to ask you, you know, I might, I don't think I've ever asked you this before previously, but um, if you could work with any artist, who would you want to work with in the future that you haven't already worked with, of course, because okay, you've worked good. with great people? Yeah, because, I, I, man, there's so many guys I've worked with where I want to work with them again, um, over and over and over again. <laughs> Uh, like, if I could, I'd have Marcus Martin chained in my basement. <laughs> Ooh, that's a little graphic. <laughs> yes. I just like, you can only, forget Brian K. Vaughn, you can only draw my stories now. <laughs> there are so many guys I want to work with. Um, just because I'm, I'm just such a huge fanboy. Um, like, from my, like, I would kill to do something with Alan Davis or Brian Boland, or George Perez, or there's so many guys out there that I would just be like, oh, I've always, Bill Sankiewicz. There, there's so many guys that I would just like love to work with. And there's so many wonderful modern people I'd love to work with. And and you get to this thing where you start working with guys and they become your guys. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd be like, I'd love to do something with Sarah Pacelli, and then Brian Michael Bendis would fly out of nowhere and just go, no. <laughs> Stop! Dad, go away. Mine, it's yours of me. <laughs> you know. And then there's there's the fan in me that would never want to, you know, Yoko something. Right. You know, I'd never want to like, no, never take Sean Phillips away from Ed Brubaker. <laughs> never. I want to see the next one. Right. <laughs> Feed me stories. You know, I don't. I don't want to be a home wrecker. <laughs> So, but and and there's there's friends I want to work with, 
Um, and then there's there's like friends where you you become really good friends working on the books. Um, like you can see, whenever I can, I go back to work with Ty Templeton because uh, right. we just have we just have fun. Um, and working on Surfer, mm-hmm. I I can't think of a day <laughs> where I don't want to work on a comic with Mike Allred and Laura Allred. Yeah. This has been one of the most rewarding experiences. Um, when when I work with guys on Spider Man, like I said before, I have to work um, with multiple teams at the same time, working on stories at different rates, and to have that relationship where it's just me and Mike and Laura every month. Oh, that's a dream totally. to, to work on one character with one artist and, and to have them be so talented. Mm-hmm. Um, and such nice people. The, the All Reds are just so, they're so nice. I know. <laughs> and they, I, it's just the most enjoyable thing in the world. Uh, I can get an email from Mike Allred that has nothing to do with Surfer. It's just, and the fact that I see I have a, an email waiting in my email box from Mike makes me physically happy. Like, oh, it's a Mike, it's a Mike email. What do you, what do you say? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, and, and hopefully it goes the same way. Like, um, Laura says whenever, uh, whenever she pulls Mike away from the drawing board and he's drawing Surfer, mm-hmm. uh, he starts making baby sounds. <laughs> <laughs> like she wants to keep drawing <laughs> um, and, and it, it shows on the page um, it's just uh, they, I yeah well, like uh, every, on surfing, every yeah. panel in the surfer on the surfer um, floppies are just they're amazing like they're so well thought out like there's there's nothing lazy about it you know what I mean like Oh, it's 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 beautiful storytelling. It's great character work. It's it's got Mike's unique style and mm-hmm. flair and fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I I just and Laura's colors. I just I couldn't be happier. Um, you know, there, there's the when you start working with someone um, regularly and they're your guy, mm-hmm. or um, you you start. You know it's working when you st- kind of start becoming the uh, the couple that nobody wants to play Pictionary with. <laughs> you know, that person does like one squiggle, the other person goes, unbearable likeness of being! Yeah. Yeah. Everyone just looks at you like, oh, screw you. We're not playing Pictionary with you, you jerks. That's how my fiancé and the, his mother are. It's like, oddly, like they're super, super connected and it's scary and terrifying. <laughs> I've, I've played Cards Against Humanity and Pictionary and with them, and all the Cards Against Humanity is terrifying. They're just on the same wavelength, and it's it's really... Why would you play with your fiancé's mo- and his mother? Uh, we or were it's... all just playing. They wanted to play. <laughs> so I was like, I, okay. I, I, I played it once with my parents and some people, and it was the worst idea. It was, it was, it was so hilarious, though. Like... I did not know how dirty-minded she is. <laughs> oh, no, there, there's a point when we had to stop because my mom was convinced she had the funniest thing. Oh, God. But she didn't know what a golden shower was. She just thought oh. it sounded funny. <laughs> and I was like, do you know what a golden shower is? And she's like, no, what's a golden shower? I'm like, we're, we're done. We're not playing anymore. We're packing up Go to bed, Mom. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not explaining to my mother what a golden chair is. <laughs> this is terrible. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> but the 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 fun thing with, uh, with also is like when you surprise each other and um, it's okay. Like I, the person who does this, in my opinion, the person who does this better than anyone in the industry is Jeff Loeb. Jeff Loeb tailors his scripts to whoever his artists you're supposed to do it Mm -hmm. you're supposed to tailor your scripts to whoever your artist is and and lean into their strengths and and avoid the stuff they don't like doing so that it's fun for them and it plays into their idiom and jeff Loeb is so good 
at taking the ball and lobbing it over the plate for his artists. Like he knows where their sweet spots are. Mm -hmm. Uh, So you always get like when, when you get a hush, um, it's the best Jeff Loeb, Jim Lee story. And when you get a, a long Halloween, it's the best Jeff Loeb, Jim sales story, Tim Mm -hmm. sales story. So it's like, he's really good at that. Um, there are things that you just know your guy is going to do well. Um, and with, with Mike, for me, one of the, the greatest things of joy of, of writing a server is I always leave the alien races completely open. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like I go, this needs to be this alien. They're a warrior race and I'm giving you no, no <laughs> guidelines. <laughs> Yeah, you knock yourself out. Like, here's what they need to do through the course of the story. But, you know, surprise me. That's and so you cool. Get this... Yeah. So whenever surfer pages show up, I love seeing the aliens. It's a total <laughs> like, shock. <laughs> yeah. What What's Mike doing to me now? Like, what am I going to see? You know, it's some blue guy with three eyes and he's wearing three eyed glasses. I'm like, great. <laughs> I do, I do love the aliens in those books. They're great. I mean, the it, the sil- your silver your guys' silver surfer run is still the first trade I tell people to pick up whenever they ask me what to get their kids. So I'm just like, no, no, silver surfer, definitely. I've given it to like every every ten year old kid that I know. <laughs> we do we do really well with uh comic readers children and comic readers significant others that you know (laughs) when people give it to their significant other they go oh i don't like comics but oh this is fun yeah Yeah. we get that with kids but if i could make any change to our entire silver surfer run Mm -hmm. there's one joke in like the opening arc that I would change. What was um, that? Uh, Dawn is wondering if the aliens are going to probe her. Oh. It's the one joke I look at it and I go, I don't want that in Surfer. <laughs> I, like, yeah, and I guess, like, you know, a child wouldn't pick up on that anyway, but... Yeah, it's, it's one quick joke. She just says, like, you guys aren't going to probe me, are you? Yeah, and it's one balloon, and it's like, because we didn't realize, like I didn't realize it till till like we hit issue like three or four, but we were telling all ages stories. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I I like that. Um, you know, you think of some of you know the greatest movies of all time mm-hmm. are P- are PG movies. Oh yeah, and everyone loves them. I mean, there's there's this bizarre feeling and i worked on stuff like batman adventures and superman adventures and justice League adventures where you just go in and you tell a good story and if someone you know is eight and they read it that's great and if someone is 20 and 30 or 40 or 50 and they read it that's great um but there's no point to you talk down to your audience yeah you just go in and have fun and there, there's something like i'll constantly end up in a situation where i meet a celebrity and I want to give them comics. And it always turns out where I go, well, the Silver Surfer comics are safe because they're going to turn around and give the comics to their kids. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll be like, and I have all these Spider-Man comics. And when I'm writing them, I'm, I'm so happy that I wrote that scene where Hobgoblin gets decapitated. And then I go, <laughs> oh, I can't give this to this person. Don't give this to your kid. Don't yeah. have your kid read this. <laughs> you know, and you're like, oh, man. So, yeah, if, if that's something I, if I had to do over again, uh, the probe line would go out. Watch one balloon in one issue, and I go, yeah. oh, I don't like that it's there. That, honestly, a child probably wouldn't understand and think twice about, you know. But uh, like, even when I first started reading your Silver Surfer comics, I, I didn't know if it was going to be all ages or anything. I had no idea. And, uh, of course, me, I can't recommend anything to a child till I've read everything (laughs) i've inspected it all right um and uh i don't i don't remember ever i don't even remember that comment and thinking twice about it either so 
Mm. Oh, I, I, Mike draws it so innocently, and and it really was just a a riff I did mm-hmm. really fast in the in the script. And it, yeah, I think it's pretty harmless, but it's the it's the one thing I wish I could take out. Um, that said, like if, if we write a story that's sad and we get you crying, and if it gets a little kid crying, I'm happy. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I don't mind when we occasionally, because uh, we usually go saccharine sweet on Surfer, but every now and then we go for schmaltz and we go for a, a tear. Um, and I like that. I like that I made you cry. <laughs> um, no, because it meant you were invested in the story and you got into it and you care about these characters. Of course. Uh, um, and if it's good, if good things happen all the time, then it's too safe. Um, I want you to be worried if something's happening. Right. Um, and, and not, and, but the weird thing is with the surfer, who's almost all powerful, the question isn't, are you physically in danger? But that's never the, you're with the surfer. Mm-hmm. So the, the question is always something completely different. It's like, are you emotionally <laughs> okay? by the end of the story. Um, I don't want to say anything, but uh, yeah, it's one of the things I do when I'm working on stories is I, um, I have my think tank and I'll run things by, you know, friends to see how the story's working or like, did you like that beat? Did that work? Um, and I, I know for some surfer stuff we got coming up where we're heading into gold because I've, I've told like one of the things is that in my think tank, I always make sure I have um, uh, uh, more women than men when I'm running surfer stories mm. because I want to get the input on Dawn. Like, am I doing this right or is she okay? Um, and uh, they give the best feedback. Uh, women give the best feedback when you get to the, the story gut punches. And uh, there's some stuff coming up where I actually, I was telling someone, I was running the beats of a surfer story over dinner, and they cried. (laughs) And I was like, yeah, this is going to be great. (laughs) I'm going to make them all cry. Every last (laughs) one of them. (laughs) It's like, and then I hit that beat. (laughs) Fantastic. A little sadistic there. (laughs) But well, you also, you know, there's also the the beats that are fun. Like I, I really like. Did you read the casino issue? Oh, I've read them all. Uh, which oh. one was the casino issue, though? I'm trying uh, to think. Issue, it's like the the last one on the stands. Like issue eight hasn't come oh, out yet. Oh, okay, <laughs> the last one. I, no, I actually haven't got the last one yet. Okay, yeah, I'm behind. Okay. I'm behind then. Okay. It's totally cool. There, there's there's a scene with Mephisto in the casino that I just love to bits and Mike killed on it. Oh. Yeah, you'll see. Okay, I'll, I'll have to make sure I get a copy. <laughs> uh, yeah, that I'm, that that's like a silly bit. So sometimes I like it when we, re- we do the really, really silly bit. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah, so yeah, if we can get you laughing and we can get you crying and we've done something that like elicited an ex- you know, response from you off of like a drawing on a piece of paper that that there's something neat about that, that you got that invested into it. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I know the, uh, the comics that like had the biggest effect on me. Um, have you ever read Grant Morrison's animal man? Uh, no, I actually, I never really got into animal man. I gotta, I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> to- totally. There's, there's uh, if you're listening and you want to read Grant Morrison's animal man, <laughs> Turn this off now. Turn this off. I'm spoiling spoil. something. <laughs> Good spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoil. Um, there's this great sequence um, where for the longest time, he's trying to kind of work out the meaning of life um, while he's traveling along through his adventures um, and things are taking weird turns. And he's getting closer and closer to kind of figuring out the secret of the universe. Mm-hmm. And what he, you're realizing, what he's slowly figuring, what he's figuring out is he's figuring out he's a character in a comic book. Oh, okay. Oh, Grant, Grant Morrison does this in all every damn story. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So, <laughs> did you read Annihilator? Like, later? <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, Morrison, you're not doing this again. Oh, he did it. He did it again. He did it. Oh, like with the Ultra <laughs> thing, yeah. But it was the first time he did it was an Animal Man. Oh, was it? Okay. okay. And it was building and building and building to it. And there's this bit where he and this other character go into the desert and they take shrooms. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, and they're they're getting visions, and Animal Man's kind of like looking around, and and he's like, "Can you see them all out there? They're all <laughs> looking at us. All these faces." And then you flip the page, and if you can imagine the the scale of a comic book, mm-hmm. like how tall it is and wide it is, hold your face that up to your face. It's like the size of a head. Mm-hmm. That you flip the page and it's Animal Man's head, it's Buddy's head to the correct one to one scale. Like <laughs> the frame of the comic is like a, a window. He's looking right at you. Oh, <laughs> and he, he's and he screams, "I can see you." That's creepy. <laughs> and, and I remember reading that, and I was on the can. <laughs> and I flung the comic across the room. <laughs> it was like, ah! like I'm like, I have never been a- acted more viscerally towards a comic. And I'm like, kudos. <laughs> Way to go. Or um have you have you ever read uh Scott you know Scott McCloud from Understanding Comics? Uh I don't know him personally. <laughs> have you read Understanding Comics? Uh no, no, I don't think so. Oh my god! Okay, uh, I'm gi- I'm giving you a homework assignment. Amy. Okay. Go go and buy Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. Okay. It's it's a book about comics for people who want to make comics, or I guess even uh, it would be great for a comic journalist to break down the language of comics. It's it's really a, it's it's a how to. Um, but the whole thing is that of a comic. Okay. So as he explains concepts of comics to you, you suddenly realize earned it by reading it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really good. Anyway, he's he's an awesome uh, talent. He did the oh. graphic novel that she said, uh, but he his claim to fame was a book called Zot. Oh, I know um, Zot and. You know Zot? Yeah. Okay. So that that's Scott McCloud. Okay. And there's there are these stories where Zot is like larger than life, and he lives in a world where it's flying cars and robots, uh, uh, robot butlers and talking chimps, and it's it's awesome. Um, and uh, he meets an Earth girl from our world, okay. and the stories about Zot for the longest time are is the girl from Earth. Gets, who has, whose life kind of sucks because she lives on Earth, gets to escape to the portal and have adventures with Zot. And then partway through the run, they flipped it, where Zot, the character from the super cool world, is stuck in our Earth, is stuck on Earth, and will Earth break him? You know, can this guy who's the eternal optimist and wonderful character, you know, can can he survive in in a real world? Mm. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's very good. And when they started doing the Earth stories, they would actually tackle big, important things. Um, well, emotional things. Um, like one character was coming out kind of things that you wouldn't deal with in a sci-fi book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the sci-fi fantasy, escapism, wacky. You know, anyway, I'm, I'm making a bad case for a really wonderful series. <laughs> um, but the, he did this trick in an issue with Zai where... You would read the story, and the story would be over, and then you'd get to the letters page. And he wrote this one issue of Zot, where this character had a very important, uh, big personal choice to make. And you were emotionally invested in this character, and you wanted them to make the right choice. And you get to the end of the issue, and they they take the easy way out and you're depressed you're just like oh i wish you didn't do that mm. and, you, and then you hit the letters page you're like oh. and then you flip the letters page and there's one more page of the story and they run back and they make the right choice and you go yes <laughs> and i'm like scott mcleod you evil bastard you, you 
You knew the format of that comic. You knew you stuck in that one page after the end. <laughs> oh, you're evil. <laughs> and I love you. <laughs> so, yeah, it, to me, the, my favorite comics are the comics that just mess with me. Um, that's, why, that's why we do it, or why do it at all. Oh, well, I'm definitely going to get a copy of that book then. I'm surprised oh. I've never heard of it before. I took I took um, an online course actually on comics and comic book history, but it didn't it didn't talk too much about the last twenty years of comics. It was mostly like the beginning of comics and stuff. But it, well, again, it was an online course, so you know. <laughs> uh, uh, Scott McCloud's written three books. He's written Understanding Comics, Reinventing Comics, and Making Comics. Uh, start with understanding. Okay. That's the that's the one big one. And it's really about the mechanics and the structure and the soul of comics. Cool. It's good. It's cool. really good. I will order it on Amazon. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I think I have to let you go because it's getting very late here and I have to get up really early in the morning like oh, an yay. adult. <laughs> I survived, and I, I talked for way too long. No, it was great. I'm oh. going to end up making this into two separate um, two separate uh, videos, so, that, you know, that I can get Yay, it on YouTube. with no picture. I will um, <laughs> put artwork, probably, from... Yay! I mean, I have a lot of the physical comics, so I might just have a video of flipping through the comics, like, something like that. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I put up photos that for reference of whatever you're talking about, then I'm like, here's that comic so that the people know exactly, you know, what it looks like and such. But yeah. Well, if you, if, if you need to, if you need to do that uh, again and have video, warn me ahead of time and we'll, we'll do that. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Definitely. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Next time I'll be like, it is a video. So don't have the whiteboard out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Okay. I promise. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Okay. Thanks, Amy. You have a great evening. You too. Bye-bye. Hey, bye. bye.